Hello everybody, welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, I wanted to take a look at how I created this texture for this sort of uh, castle tower or a rook chess piece, if you want to look at it that way. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, not too detailed, but it's an, it's an, it's enough detail to to represent sort of this lay these over, these layered bricks that are kind of staggering on top of each other. Just kind of neat. Um, and these print really well because there's a chamfer on them, so uh, there's a 45 degree chamfer on every single uh, line here, which is pretty neat. And then there's these little uh, windows, these little these sort of fake windows. And uh, one way I thought about making it is that I would draw this out as one sketch and then sort of uh, wrap it around the cylinder. But that's not really how uh, uh, I was I was able to achieve this effect. I actually had to kind of build it. Uh, step by step as a separate object and then just sort of cut that away from the cylindrical object uh, So let me show you how I kind of put it together and uh, just kind of a fair warning This isn't gonna work for anything other than a cylinder because we're kind of building this manually <laughs> So I, I thought I'd just walk you through the steps on how I built it. So the first step is to kind of make a, um, a sketch and Draw on whatever plane you want but ideally you want to make it a, a, a diameter of whatever cylinder you want to do this to. So in this case, I'll just put like 50. Uh, I don't think it worked, so I'm going to hit uh, the dimension tool or D on your keyboard and then type in the number we want. So I want 50. Hit OK. Or not yet. What we'll do next is do an offset. So I'll offset this edge here uh, by one millimeter. So I'll do negative one because I want it on the inside. So I'll hit OK. And then the next thing we'll do is I'm going to draw uh, some lines to represent uh, a profile for our sort of vertical uh, stems. So uh, if you roll over, you see the line tool, how it's kind of just a regular crosshair? As soon as you roll over an edge, that X, it represents that it's going to be kind of locked and constrained to that edge. So I'm going to click on this edge, and I want to make sure that it is a zero degree straight edge and again, make sure that the cursor has turned into this little X so that uh, I know that I'll be constrained uh, and it's exactly on that edge. Because as this curves around, you'll see that um, it kind of matters. So I'll, I'll do another one here. And again, make sure that it's an X and uh, a, sort of a zero degree. Okay, so one thing I, I, I do want to do is I kind of want to uh, make a distance between here and here to be exactly one millimeter. So with the dimension tool, I'll select this one and this one and say one millimeter, hit OK. All right, and that's kind of all we need to do uh, as far as sketches, I'll hit OK. Now I can kind of build this out. So what I'll do is I'll select uh, this profile and this sort of stem part and I'll uh, hit E on my keyboard to extrude it and I'm going to extrude it down ways by one millimeter, hit OK. And as soon as I hit OK, I, cre I created a new body, and it kind of hid my sketch. So I'm going to bring it back, and then I'll select just that little square piece, and then I'll extrude that piece out again using E on my keyboard, the hot, sheet, the hot key. And it doesn't kind of matter what it is, uh, or what, uh, what height it is, as long as it looks good to you. You can always change this later. But I'm just going to put 5 for now, and hit OK. And now what I'll do is I need to create sort of a top up here. So I'll, I'll kind of do the same thing a little bit differently. So what I'll do is I will hide this for a second, this body, and I'll select these two profiles, hit E on my keyboard, and I'll extrude this up. I'll bring back, uh, or actually I'll go to the direction under the extrude panel. I'll change the direction to two-sided. And that way I can kind of uh, play with this here. So I'm going to bring this upwards a bit. And now what I want to do is actually bring back my uh, my first body and now I kind of want to make sure that uh, the bottom of this gets glued to that stem and then I want to make sure that this one uh, kind of equates to uh, one millimeter distance so I'm gonna make sure it says six on the dot so like that so you can see here the distance up is six and the distance for side two is negative five essentially making a, a duplicate but on, on the very top of our stem and I'll hit okay so now at this point we have this kind of uh, shape. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I can hide the sketches now. We don't need them. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is before we start, the, the way to achieve a bunch of something is to just create a pattern. And But before we create the pattern, I kind of want to apply some chanfers to this because once you do a bunch of things, 
you, you, once you have a bunch of copies of an object, you don't want to click on every single edge. So I'm going to go ahead and, on, and jump ahead and do some chamfers here. So I'm going to make the chamfer 0.5 millimeters, not a full millimeter, because we'll run into some problems if we do. And I'll just kind of uh, use the command key on Mac or control on PC to select the edges that I want to add a chamfer to. So those right there. And you see I have an error already. It says there's a problem combining geometry. Uh-oh, that's not good. So it's, yeah, I'm not sure why. <laughs> that's not good. So let's let's try to chamfer it again. Or chamfer it again. It should be point. Let's try something really low, like point two. You can see here that point two is not a problem. It's okay. So what's the deal here? Maybe we need to put point four nine 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 nine. That seemed to work, but as soon as I put point uh, five, it Fusion doesn't know what to do. Not sure why. But 0.4999 is as close as we can get. <laughs> if there's anybody OCD out there, I know this is gonna for me especially this is gonna this kind of ticks me off. But hey, we're we're as close as we can get to it without Fusion kind of flipping out. So that's what we want. And if you even try to do one, it just doesn't work at all. So I guess that's just one thing to look out for. Uh, our measurements are pretty exact as far as I could tell. Maybe if we go um, back in here, maybe we can. Uh, Maybe this has to be exactly uh, on this line here. Maybe that's why. I don't see why that would be a problem, but let's let's try to do that. I'm going to say I want uh, the collinear here. And uh, Nope, that didn't work. Let me lock this in place first. And then I'll do a collinear so that it kind of moves and shifts over there, like so. OK, so now we're exactly on that uh, edge of the axis. And I'll go back into the chamfer and put 0.5. I don't think that'll make a difference. No, it doesn't. So it doesn't matter where the stem is relevant uh, relative to the sketch. So hey, that's going to have to do for now. All right, moving forward, <laughs> we're going to uh, do some duplications here. So the way I duplicate it is I'm going to use the, the rectangle uh, pattern uh, feature. And I can pull it up really quick by just hitting S on my keyboard and then typing in rectangular pattern. Actually, not rectangular pattern. I want a circular pattern. So I'll just hit Enter to select that. And uh, what I'll do is I'll make sure that the pattern type is set to bo uh, pattern bodies. You don't want faces in this in, in this example. You want bodies for the whole body. And then the axis, I'll select that. And then my origins will pop up. And I want it to be on the Z here. And then we get a sort of a ghosting uh, preview of what we're going to do. I want something like 12. 12 looks good. It's up to you, really, what, what what kind of bricks, how big you want the bricks to look or whatever. So 12 is OK. There's nothing really else to change here. And I'll hit OK. Now I got a bunch of these bodies now. So one quick way to merge them all is I'll hit Combine, click on the first one in the, in the bodies list, and then I'll hold down the Shift key and then click on the last item here. And that will essentially select all of them. And then I can hit OK. We want, them, we want the operation to be joined, so I'll hit OK. And that'll convert it into just one body. All right. Next thing we want to do is we actually want to uh, a second pair of this so that we can shift it rotationally wise. And I'll do that by, I could do that again with a, but this time with a rectangular pattern. So again, I, I use the, the, the hotkey S on my keyboard to bring up this toolbox thing. So I'll hit OK to select that. And this will be my object. Again, making sure that the pattern type is set to bodies. So I'll click on that. And then the direction, I'll select that direction and make it again on the Z. So I'm just going to drag this top arrow here to kind of make my copies. I don't want three. I want two of them. So I'm going to hit two here. And you can see now that uh, it's, it's, it needs to be kind of flush with the top here. So I'm going to make sure that the distance is six. And that's it. I'm going to hit OK. So now I have two, the, top, the, the one on the top and the one on the bottom. Uh, it doesn't matter what you select. I'm going to select the one on the top, and then I'm going to rotate it. So I'll hit M. Or you know, click move, but M is the sh the hotkey. The next thing is like Fusion's like I don't know where the center of this is, <laughs> so I have to tell it. So I'm gonna hit the set pivot uh, option, and then I can select on any uh, any edge really that that is is relative to the center because it'll just say okay, you want it in the center. So that's how I get it in the center, and then I'll hit uh, OK done to 
confirm that set pivot. And now I can uh, uh, kind of play with the rotational handles to kind of get a good offset here. So 15 degrees looks good. I hit OK. Now I have this thing. So I'll again uh, shift select these two bodies and just uh, combine them to make one. All right. So now we have our sort of thing that we can make even more copies. So uh, let's see. S on my keyboard, rectangular pattern, select uh, this guy here, and then direction will be, I selected direction, right? Yeah, here, and then just drag it up. I eventually, you know, it depends on, what I would do is change the distance from extent to spacing so that you have a more uh, kind of easier way to, to make, uh, what do you call them, to make copies. <laughs> So at this point, your, your fusion is going to be all kind of slow because you're making a bunch of copies. So let's say uh, we want like eight copies. And they just kind of stack on top of each other because we have the same distance between all of them. So at this point, you can hit OK. <laughs> and then you can duplicate, or not duplicate them, sorry, um, combine them all into one so that we can kind of get our processing cycles back to normal. I'll hit OK. And that's kind of essentially what we built. We built this kind of thing that can cut a set uh, that when we make a cylinder, we can cut it. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'll bring, I'll use the same sketch and uh, make sure to select all of the profiles, including that little stem thing that we made. Hit E on my keyboard and then bring it up like that. Um, let me bring back uh, our texture thing so that we know we, we, we're, cut, we're covering the whole thing. So we'll go past it just a little bit and make sure that the operation is set to new body. Hit OK. I wonder if we do intersect. Nah, we don't want intersect. We want a new body like that. Hit OK. And now if I uh, subtract these two together using combine, we'll make that the target and then the, uh, the pattern thing. Change the operation from join to cut, obviously. And then hit OK. And then Fusion's going to hopefully do it right. OK. So there you go. There's our texture. We had to build it manually, but hey, we got it. Another thing I, I got to note is that you'll see that because we couldn't do a one millimeter chamfer, we have some overhang. We have quite a bit of overhang. It's a, it's a 0 0.501 <laughs> overhang. But you can shave that off by doing. Um, by just creating a new sketch and then shaving it off. So I can go back into the sketch and make another offset here. Let's see, where's the offset? This one over here. And go like negative 5 point, or 0 0.501. And then hit OK. OK. Fusion's thinking. And then we can select just that piece hit E on our keyboard to extrude, and then I'm gonna do something easy where I say um, the extent should be to the top of this object, and then it's gonna the change the operation automatically to cut. I'll say okay, and I probably forgot to, yep, I forgot to select that little profile, which is now doing all sorts of things. So I'll just double click on that and just make sure to include that. It's very, very process intensive to do this because there's just a lot of uh, geometry, a lot of edges. So I'll hit OK. And we get a beach ball. There we go. So now we have this really nice uh, cut. Obviously, it's not one millimeter. It's just 0.5 or whatever it ended up being, like 0.4999, or maybe it's 0 0.50 something. Whatever it is, there it is. <laughs> so we can, you know, we can play around with the numbers and things and try to make it, uh, you know, adjust it to whatever... Uh, the cylinder diameter is and, and kind of mess with it that way. But hey, that's how we made it. Kind of looks like a pineapple or something. Maybe not so much pineapple. But anyway, that's how I did it, this project. Um, it is kind of painstakingly. Hey, if you got another way on doing it, a much simpler way, or a, a way where I originally would like to do it, where it's just one sketch and then I kind of project it uh, on this curved surface, that'd be awesome because this really wouldn't work for anything other than a cylinder. So that's the steps that went into it. It's a little painstaking again, but I, it's the only way I could find to do it. If you want to download this object, you can totally do so. It, it, it's hollow and, and it has a twisty top. 
um, and it's pretty big. I printed it on the Ultimaker Extended. Hey, and if you haven't watched already the, the, the Time Lapse Tuesday video of it, uh, you can check out uh, our playlist that I'll have linked above uh, where you can see that this printed uh, on our Ultimaker 2 Extended and it was kind of optimized for the build volume, so that's why it's very tall. Uh, but hey, that was a fun project, very, very quick. Uh, <laughs> didn't print quickly, but uh, hopefully this helps you guys out and gives you a, a look at how to create a texture like that for, again, just a cylinder. Anyway, guys, if you want to download the Fusion 360, you can do so. Uh, the link is actually in the description, and it's also here listed in the summary of the Thingiverse object. Uh, here it is in the A360 um, browser thing. You can download it by clicking on the download button up there. Download through Fusion 360 Archive or any of these other lovely formats. But that's it from me. If you guys have any questions, or again, if you have a better way, uh, method on doing something like this, maybe for a different type of object, please let me know. It'll help me out and a bunch of other people too who watch the videos. That's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in another tutorial video. Bye, guys.